Our goal here is to find the degree measure of x, y, and z. And what we need to know here is how to work with inscribed angles and tangent chord angles. So really quickly, if we have an inscribed angle, that's just an angle in a circle formed by two chords. Chords are lines, right, that go across a circle but not through the center. And here is, let's say, your inscribed angle, I. And here's the arc it intercepts here. The arc is twice as large in degree measure as the inscribed angle. Now this is for any inscribed angle, so any angle, right, that is formed by two chords in a circle. It is, right, the angle is half the measure of the arc it intercepts. And the second thing we want to work with here is the tangent chord angle. That's just an angle formed by a tangent and a chord. Right, so you draw a chord, and then a tangent that meets that chord somewhere. A tangent is a line that hits the circle exactly one point. What's interesting here is we'll label these two points A and B. Right, so we have arc AB going this way. Let's say the, the red side of the arc. Oops, the red side of the arc here. And then the purple, or leave the orange, the orange side of the arc there. So what do we know now, right? We've had this angle here, let's call it angle T. Well, angle T is also half the measure of the arc, right, that it, that it intercepts. So the measurement of angle T is equal to one half the measure, oops, fix that, one half the measure of arc AB. Either way you look at it, right? Um, if here, this is angle T, right? This is the arc it intercepts, that's AB. So T is half of AB, just like uh, the inscribed angle is half of its arc. And if we flip it over here, let's say to angle O for orange, O is also half of the um, measurement of arc, this large, large, large arc AB. Um, and here we can do this, right? Here we have a pentagon inscribed in a circle, and we know it's a regular pentagon. Um, and we can go through the whole process, but basically what we see is these dashes right here. And there are five of them. It tells you that these five sections are all equal, right? They're congruent in measurement. So first of all, we have a circle 360 degrees. If we want to think about the length of each arc, we divide it by five, right? And what do we get? Well, that's 72, right? Do the math there if you want to. So this arc is 72 degrees. So Z is an inscribed angle. It's formed by this chord and this one here. So this inscribed angle is half of the arc it intercepts. So if this is 72, right, and this is 72, and this is 72, right, Z would be half of that sum. So we look at this, we do 3 times 72. That's 210, uh, 3 times 70 is 210 and plus 3 times 2 is 6, that's 216 degrees, but z is equal to half of 216, right, because 216 is the total arc that the inscribed angle z intercepts, so 1 half of 216 is 108 degrees, right? So now we know, okay, z, angle z equals 108 degrees. And then um, these two purple lines here that help form angles X and, and Y are both tangent lines. So now we have tangent chord angles, right? So here, let's deal with angle X first of all. Sorry, angle X is a tangent chord angle. Y is not. Y is the angle over here. So we'll get to that Y in a moment. But angle X is half the measure of the arc that it intercepts. And angle X is right here, right? Oops, I don't want to use the line tool there. Right? So this is angle X. Angle X is half this arc here, and that arc is 72 degrees. So X is equal to half of 72, or 36. This angle over here is also, oops, sorry, is also half of the same arc. So this angle would also be 36 degrees. And Y is the remaining degrees in the circle. So what is Y equal? Well, it equals 180 all the measurement of all the degrees in the circle, minus 72 degrees, the two 36 degree angles. So y is equal to what? Well, 180 minus 70 is 110, minus two more is 108. So y is equal to z, right? y is equal to 108 degrees as well. All right, thanks.